All right, Christian. Um, I think I'm done grilling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's good. So yes, yeah, so I appreciate it. Um, if you want to hang out, I'll, you know, there's about three minutes left here. I'm just going to show a quick demo of uh, totally. kind of the latest. So, all right, guys, hang in there. Um, let me show you what's going on here. Uh, so where am I? All right. So this is a demo. The context here is I've got um, some TensorFlow code that I want to train and then um, at some point deploy. And so I'm actually doing both of these steps inside. I'm going to package up one Docker image that contains um, the training code, and it's going to train itself and then serve itself on a um, port. So I, um, the thinking here, too, is that because I'm doing this all locally, because I'm doing this within Docker, um, I know that the exact Docker image that gets pushed out to production is the, the same one that I'm working with, this, with the same Python libraries, the same uh, right, like pip installs and the conda installs and all that kind of stuff. So, um, so just to kind of show you, there's nothing on my sleeve here. Uh, what we're doing, let me just, here's a sample, of course, we're using MNIST. Um, let me show you guys the code slash train. So this is adapted from the TensorFlow example MNIST, uh, and we're passing in learning rate, passing in batch size. Um, there's this sort of prepare phase, which is going to pull the data down um, to be used for training. There's a validation phase, and then there's a serving phase, essentially. So we're going to do all this. Um, this on the right here is kind of... Uh, what I'm, I'm going to be showing you guys here. So, uh, okay, so let's just do this. Now, what I have here is a Docker image that contains the, the TensorFlow runtime. And what it's doing is it's slurping in the model that I'm passing in um, right here. So that's going to actually slurp in the that like training code that I showed you guys. And so let's do it here, PIO model oh so i've got this command line you know if you do pip install pio uh dash cli you can do this but it'll be pio model build so here the term model build means um take my model that right now is just code is just python code and build it into this docker image this sort of self-contained executable right and um at first i was just uh, packaging up the trained model, and then I realized I could also actually really package up and do the training, um, and then really have it serve itself all at the same time. So I'll explain why you would do this here in a sec. Um, it's essentially uh, so when you're doing model training, you have you know 20% of the data you would hold out, right, and then you would train the model on the that like 80% that's left over. Um, then you would then take the 20% that you've held out and run it through the model to validate. And so this is the sort of validation phase. Now this is fine for, right, like this is how people think today, and then they push the model out um, into the real world, and this, you know, uh, could be, uh, for example, fraud detection could be marking every transaction fraud, right? And so um, what people want to do is extend this validation phase out into production. Right, so this model, it's not truly validated until it's uh, like sitting alongside the existing model, and and then you can see how these two models compare on live traffic. So that's the use case here. Um, model type is TensorFlow. Model name equals uh, MNIST. Okay, let me just take a look at that. All right. I have to, the bottom of my screen is a little bit cut off because of Zoom. Um, so this is the command I'm running. So this is actually going to build the Docker image and slurp in uh, the model TensorFlow and MNIST. Um, right now, it's just hard coded to look in a samples directory, which is this that samples directory right there. Um, there's a samples directory here, and uh, that has TensorFlow and then the MNIST model there. That was what I was showing you guys before. Okay, so back up here. Uh, so this Docker image is essentially useless unless I give it um, the model type and the model name to slurp in. And now I'm going to do model start. 
Also, this works on CPU and GPU. Oop, I already had one running here. Uh, so let me stop that. Okay, start it. You can also do logs. So now this is all running locally. This is on my laptop. So here it's actually training itself. Um, I don't have a GPU locally, so it's throwing this warning. It's not going to collect any CPU stats. But what's cool is it'll actually show during training the CPU stats, right? Like uh, CPU load, um, CPU memory. If you're on a GPU, it'll show those as well. So right, like data scientists can actually see this stuff, right? Like they might not care. Um, but if they do see a relative spike from the you know previous model that they're training, um, then they can at least mark it and um, and take it for further investigation. Okay, so the end of this, um, don't worry about that error. That one down there, that's fine. All right, so let's take a look. So this is the model that we just trained and we did a little validation step here. So we've got, uh, so right, like again, this is all kind of static data, batch data that we've trained. We took 80%. We trained it, then we validated on 20%. Um, here's some of the CPU stats. Some of these are a bit raw. This is the fact that I'm running inside of Docker and um, some of the CPU stats aren't totally accurate. So working through some of those, there's no GPU. Uh, and then if I did multiple runs, so here I, I used a learning rate of 0 0.05. I can actually tell it to, oh, it's showing the sensible version, which is the latest, uh, one to one, which just dropped, I think a few days ago. Um, how much RAM I've allocated this Docker image, uh, two gigs and how many cores. And here I can actually, if I had multiple runs, like one with a learning rate of 0.05 and one with a learning rate of 0.025, I could actually compare them. Um, didn't do that here. Also, I can bust into TensorBoard. So like a lot of you guys might be familiar with TensorBoard. Um, we can actually look and see some of the same stats. Uh, so bias loss, here's our loss. This hopefully is going towards zero. Yes, it is. Also, TensorBoard gives us a look at the images that we trained with. So that's kind of cool. Um, anything slash train was training. Anything slash validation was the 20% held out. Uh, we can look at uh, the graph of our model here. Hopefully, what happened here? Number one, hit the screen. Okay, slight bug there. Let's look at our uh, distributions here. So that's our validation. Here's our training. And we can look at the fun histograms. Everyone loves a good histogram. Okay, so. What this is doing is this is augmenting the existing tensor board metrics that are maintained during training um, and sort of gives you a side by side comparison. Now, the next step um, is going to be incorporating the actual runtime metrics. So let me show you a quick um, thing there. So we're in, so this is now Grafana and during, oh, and so I actually didn't complete the, um, end to end here. There's a predict, PIO model predict. Um, and inside of this samples, TensorFlow, MNIST, uh, there's this data directory that has a sample test request. And this is a sample image. Oops. So this is, uh, you know, the uh, 28 by 28 matrix and the, you know, grayscale values here. And so that's what we're going to use here. If we do PIO uh, model dash predict, it's already set up. Um, if we look at the configuration for PIO, I've already got it set for model test request path, so I don't have to pass it, but I certainly could pass it. Um, PIO model predict. I'll do it just to tie this together. Oops. So this is passing in what would uh, normally come from like uh, a web request or through a Kafka stream uh, or through Spark streaming, something like that, right? 
So this is using localhost. The, the first invocation is pretty slow just because it kind of has to wake up sensible surveying and that kind of thing. Um, so here we're actually making predictions. Um, I've got this mode turned on uh, where we can actually do like a little mini load test right from the command line. So this is hitting local, right? So what this is doing is giving me the ability to, if I've trained a super deep model or 50 layers deep, um, which I have super great accuracy, right? But all of a sudden, um, my local latency goes up, you know, from here it's 20 milliseconds uh, or probably 30 milliseconds up to 300 milliseconds. This is probably something I, I might not want to, uh, um, right, like bring out to production. Or if I do, I need to make sure that my timeouts from um, right, like any uh, like devices that might be calling in, right, that, that those client teams know that this model is going to take 300 milliseconds, uh, something like that. Or what you could do is deploy it in this sort of silent, uh, like canary mode, um, which will get traffic, uh, but isn't necessarily going to fail or is definitely not going to fail client calls because it's just sort of getting shadow traffic from the actual current uh, model servers. So real quick, and you know, this is going to get integrated better um, into this dashboard here. So think of, you know, this is kind of the like offline training uh, metrics, right? Like validation accuracy, training accuracy. Think of there being more columns here for sort of the current uh, latency, right? Like the request latency. Um, uh, yes, how long did it take to actually process? And because of the way that we're actually breaking down, um, so let me show you guys. We have three different monitors. One is, so I had mentioned earlier on the call talking with Christian here that um, we're actually monitoring how long does it take to go from JSON into uh, right, the TensorFlow tensor, right? So there's a conversion there. So that we want to actually track separate. Um, and then there's the actual prediction time. And then there's the other way going from uh, the NumPy array back into JSON. So. All of that gets wired up here. It's just nice Python uh, with scope. Um, these monitors take care of the rest. They know the name of the model. Uh, they know the phase. And all of this ends up going to Grafana. And like I said, this will get pulled into um, the same dashboard at some point. Uh, and boom, this is localhost and it's direct. So this is just Grafana sitting on top of Prometheus. Uh, Prometheus is the data uh, metrics collector, and let's see, we're going to do a new dashboard, got a new graph here, we're going to call this request per second, or sorry, this is just total request, total num, and then for here, we can do HTTP request total. And we're going to look at the last five minutes just to make it sure it's current. And you can see the 500 right there. So if I did this, so this is live. So, you know, like, uh, so just imagine having counters here. Uh, the other metrics we have, the add a query. We can look at the, um, so there's a, a counter for the exceptions. Um, there's uh, metrics around the uh, like prediction itself and the transform request and the transform response. So like imagine seeing those three right like alongside and it you know, probably just getting updated sort of real time um, as that canary is out there live taking traffic. This is very useful and then you can actually compare if you have multiple experiments out there, multiple models that have been trained differently, um, maybe have uh, right like deeper uh, like networks, um, maybe you have Sidekit model out there, not TensorFlow, maybe you have um, a Spark model out there, right? Like these would all show up here and um, you can compare them side by side. So that's the demo there. I think we're about 10 minutes over, so um, I'm gonna let you guys go. Uh, yeah, Christian, are you still on the line? Yeah, I am. Thank you so much. Yeah, Thank thanks, you. man. Thanks for taking time out of your vacay there. <laughs> yeah, my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. It was a good chat. All right. Sweet, man. Yeah, so I'll talk and see you soon, buddy. Sounds good, man. See you. All right. Bye, everyone.